Hello everyone, this will be the first video to show you how to use the Excel sheets that are available on the website. If you haven't had a look at these, uh, please visit the website and go to the Excel sheet section and you can download them from there. As you can see from the name of, like from the title of the website, uh, these sheets will be mainly designed to help students and candidates preparing for the CFA exam. So even though they are general concepts and they appear in different reading in different textbooks, the formulas that are being used in these Excel sheets are the ones that appear in the original CFA curriculum. The first reading today, so the first video that I'll be showing you today, is related to the option of pricing boundaries uh, sheet, which is available on the website. And if you'd like to download it, you will go to the website, and then you will go to the Excel sheet section, and scroll down to the end because it was the first file that was posted on the site so you'll find it over here and it says over here that this file is related to level one which is true because the only people who will be asked to calculate the lower pricing boundaries and upper pricing boundaries for option are level one candidates the other candidates probably will not have these uh, questions because the, even though the material appear again in level 2 and I think level 3, it is considered as an optional segment. Nevertheless, it is still an important material for level 2 and level 3 candidates. And I'll show you later uh, why they have to know what is the upper and lower pricing boundary. So assuming you downloaded the Excel file from here, you will have an Excel sheet that will uh, show you first the purpose of the file. So the file can be used to solve problems related to optional pricing boundaries. Uh, it will assist you in determining the lower and upper bounds for both European and American options, given some input requirement. So if you go to the original reading that was posted on the website, and you can find the link to it uh, below the video, you will see that I've explained in detail how to derive the lower and upper pricing boundaries for both European and American calls. Uh, sorry, for calls and puts. And this table summarizes all the results that we found uh, on the website. Now, again, as I mentioned, because we are using we are using it for lab for CFA exams, it assumes that uh, the formulas that appear in the curriculum assumes a discrete uh, timing pricing. So the discount the discount rate and the interest rate that appear are not continuous, and that's why you see that we don't see an exponential in these formulas. And this is the same formula that was used in developing the Excel sheet. Now, why this material is important for level 2 and level 3 candidates? Because level 2 will, um, level 2 candidates will be preparing, to, will be trying to price options using different models like the binomial tree, the black shoals, and if we want to determine the um, validity of these models, if we want to make sure that these models are accurate models to price options, one way to do so is to make sure that the price that we get out of these models falls below the lower and upper pricing boundaries. And if it doesn't, then the model is not accurate. So that's why, if, as I mentioned, even though the material is specifically toward level 1 candidates, level 2 and level 3 candidates can still make use out of this material. So let's assume that you have already learned your stuff and you uh, understood why this formula appears, for example, for the European call, why is it the maximum between the price or the intrinsic value, why that is exactly the lower bound, and you are ready to solve some questions, either end of chapter problems or some problems from mock exams, sample exams, or other notes providers. And let's assume that the example that you have is the following. So given a strike price of 40, stock price of 42, discount rate of 6%, and six months to maturity, find the lower and upper pricing boundaries for European coal, American coal, European put, and American put. So in particular, all kinds of options that are available, we would like to find them for the following set of data. You will go to the Excel sheet that you have. And this sheet will not be available on the exam, so you will have to solve the question by yourself and double-check your answer using this Excel sheet. Or if you would like to know the other... Um, the chart that appears here if you'd like to know some extra material, basically. So we will start by pricing. Let's assume the first thing we would like to do is an American call. So we'll choose from the list an American. And then for the second uh, cell, we will use 
we'll select call and then we have the strike price to be 40 so we will enter 40 and then the stock price was 42 and then the discount rate it's already telling you that the cell has been formatted to be displayed as a percentage so all you'll have to do is to enter 6 and it will show us as a 6% and then the time to maturity has to be shown as a proportion for a year. So, for example, you have six months here, so you will enter it as six divided by twelve, which is zero point five. If you don't know, if you haven't, like, if you have days and you would like to do the math right away in the cell, all you have to do is to enter the formula. So, uh, instead of if you have thirty days, you will enter thirty divided by three sixty-five. But right now we have already given, we have already been given that it's six months, so you will enter zero point five. And right away here you will have the results, you will have the lower bound, it will tell you that an American call price is at least 3.14 and at most 42. And this graph over here will show you the different, the lower and upper pricing boundaries for certain price range. And it's showing you basically from 0 to 100, if the price was somewhere between 0 to 100, what would the lower and upper pricing bounds be? And there is a small note over here that tells you that option prices that fall between two lines are acceptable option prices. So assuming that you have the same data, except that you have probably more input, and you use the binomial model or black shoals to determine an option price, and you get a certain price range. If this price falls within these two lines, depending obviously on the current stock price, or if you try to determine the whole chart cells, which I'll be showing you later when I explain the material for level 2. If the price falls within these two lines, it means that the model is valid. It doesn't make it, I mean, you are not sure 100% that this is the accurate model, but it's at least one way to show you that this is, could be a good model to start with. Now, assuming that you have already found the American call, you can change it to European call and you will see the changes. In this case nothing has changed because as you see the American call and the European call have the same lower boundaries and upper pricing boundaries. What differs is when it comes to output. So we'll go back here and we'll change it back to American and then we'll change it back, we'll change it to output. And we'll see how the graph has changed and we'll see what are the new lower and upper pricing boundaries. So, if you change it to a put, so that's a European option, the only thing that has changed here is the upper pricing boundaries. And you are given the results, so you can go and confirm yourself to make sure that you have uh, the same result that you found through the Excel sheet. And if you think that this is, for example, a weak a material that you are not really strong in, you can probably write your own problems. But it's the same exact problem, you just change the numbers, try them yourself, and then if you would like to confirm if your answers are right or not, here you go, you have an Excel sheet, you just go plug in the numbers and double check your answers. So that's pretty much it about the option pricing file. If you have any questions, please make sure you email me at my email, and don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Thank you for listening, and bye-bye.